Danger, Dr. Banfield. <laughs> the human mind is like a cage. Beyond the light, there are dark passageways and mysterious receptors. I, Dr. Daniel Danfield, have explored those unknown retreats and know their secrets. <laughs> Dr. Daniel Danfield, authority on crime psychology, is unhappy faculty for getting himself mixed up in hazardous predicaments because of his astonishing revelations regarding the workings of the criminal mind. Today's story begins in a state prison. Two cellmates, one of them the notorious and desperate Red Jacoby, are discussing a long planned and carefully worked out prison break. Hey, Red. Yeah, Mickey? Ain't it about time? In a minute now. This waiting's getting me down. Maybe someone had it. No one's had it. They know what they'd get if they did. Yeah, but that screw should be along here by now. Shut up. He'll be along. What if he don't come, Red? What if they figured out that... Shut up, I said. Okay, Red, okay. You're the boss. And don't forget it. Just don't forget it, Mickey. And remember what you're supposed to do. Sure, Red. I'll do it all right. When the screw comes along, we start a fight, and then... Shut up. Here he comes. Shall we start fighting now, Red, shall we? Yeah. Start yelling and calling me names. And then I'll slug you. Okay, Red. You dirty rat! No one ain't gonna call me that and get away with it. No? Well, maybe this will teach you different. You louse, take this. Hey, hey, you guys, cut it out. Take a poke at me, will you? Here's one to remember me by. Cut it out, I said. I'll come in there and say I do better than that punk. Get ready, please. He's opening the door. Yeah. So you thought I'd take your cheap talk, eh? Well, take this. All right. All right, you ask for it. I'll take it and hand you a couple for interest. Let's go. I told you guys to get him, Red. Oh. Oh. Take that, you lousy screw. Nice going, Red. It's lucky you had the gun, huh? Get up. Get us chasing rod. Yeah, yeah. I got him. Come on now, quick. Lock the screw inside. Yeah. How about the other guys? Never mind them now. We gotta get some more guns and ammunition. Come on. Where are we going? Through this door. There's guns inside. Suppose there's a screw inside. There ain't. I figured all the angles. Come on, inside with you, Mickey. <laughs> we should be let some of... Yeah, there's going to be one of us if you don't stop belly aching. Grab that gun. Okay, Red, okay. Hand me one, too. Yeah. Grab up that box of slugs. Now, come on now, this way. Ain't we going back and let them other guys out? No. Now, pipe down. Hey, it's locked. We're stuck, Red. Of course, we ain't stuck. Give me them keys you took from the screw. Yeah, here. <clears throat> so none of them work. One of them will. There, that does it. Come on. What's at the end of this corridor? Door to the guard. I told you I figured everything out. I hope so, Red. I hope so. Red, look. It's a guard. Yeah. Get in close to the wall. He sees us. Hey, you guys. What the... Yes! Yeah. What... You got him, Red? Sure, I got him. Come on. Somebody will hear those shots. Oh, we ain't got a chance. No. Just stick with me, pal, and you'll see. No one ain't taking Red Jacoby alive. <laughs> Oh, there it goes. And there's a siren. Now, what about it? Come on, let's get out of here. Keep him close to the building, Mickey. Head for the wall. They got the searchlights on. We ain't got a chance. Red, stop it, will you? We got plenty of chance. Stop here. What are we going to do now? There's plenty of open space between here and that wall. You see that pile of boxes in the corner? <laughs> well, I put them there this afternoon. Take a run and jump and you can get over. We ain't got a chance. Them searchlights is all over the place. Well, stay here if you want it. They're coming, Red. They see us. Yeah. Come on. This is our only chance. Wait for me, Red. Wait for me. Hey, you In a moment, we return for the second act of Danger, Dr. Danfield, but first... Now back to our star, Michael Dunn, for the second act of... Danger, Dr. Danfield. Now understand me, Doc. I'm not asking you to take this job. It's pretty dangerous. I'm really suggesting that here's an opportunity for you to study a real murderer at close range. Very mm. clever, Captain Otis. You couldn't say anything that would make Dan more eager to take the job, and you know That's it. That's enough, Rusty. 
What makes you so sure that I'll find this Red Jacoby at 28 River Street, Captain? Well, because that's where he was living when we picked him up a year ago. I mean, his wife, uh, Poppy, has been living there ever since. Mm-hmm. It strikes me that home would be the last place an escaped convict would attempt to hide out. Ah, uh, exactly. But Red Jacoby is clever enough to realize that. I see. You think he feels that the police would be less likely to look in the more obvious places first? Yes. We've had a dragnet out all over the country and haven't even picked up our clue. So now we're going to begin on his old haunt. If Jacoby is as clever as you say, he'll realize that too. He won't be fool enough.
Actually told you that the news... Who sent you? Why, you... Stand still, Rat. I got itchy trigger finger. Who sent you? I've already told you. Who sent you? Listen, I... Who sent you? Oh, lay off, will you? Get up, Red. Who sent you? Oh, who sent you? Oh, who sent you? Oh. Ah, that did it. He's out like a light. Yeah. I'll answer the door, Poppy. It's probably this guy with the bourbon we ordered. Okay, how about this punk? I'll take care of him. Go answer the door. Okay, Red, okay. Okay, okay, I'm coming. Come on, salesman. Yeah, what do you want? Good afternoon. I'm from the welfare board. We don't want no welfare. Well, I'm sorry, but you see, in this district... I said we don't want no welfare. Scram. I'm sure you don't understand. You see... Look, sister, are you going to get out of here or am I going to have to slap your ears down? Slap my ears? Well, perhaps you don't want any welfare after all. Ah, you're catching on, baby. Get out. Well, all right, but I can't understand anyone who doesn't want... Mm. They've got Dan in there. I just know they have. Something you want, miss? Have you a public telephone? Yeah, uh, right over there on the wall. Thank you. Police headquarters. I want to speak to Captain Otis, please. What was it you wanted, miss? This is Rusty Fairfax. It's very important that I speak to Captain Otis. Just a minute. Hello, Miss Fairfax. Say, I've been trying to get a hold of the doc. You see... Captain you... Otis, they've got Dan. They're holding him prisoner. Now, wait a minute, Miss Fairfax. Who's got him? Red Jacoby. They're holding him prisoner at 28 River Street. Holding him prisoner? <laughs> I'm afraid you've been letting your imagination run out. No. Red Jacoby was captured in Chicago an hour ago. What? Surest thing you know. It just came through on the teletype. Oh, they must have gotten the wrong man. They must have. I was there. I, I saw Dan go into the house, and he didn't come out. Well, I wouldn't worry about it, Mr. Looking, or left for the back way. Oh, he didn't. I'm sure of it. Oh, Captain Otis, you've got to help me. I'm sorry, Miss Fairfax. I've got a million things to do this afternoon. Tell Doc I'll call him tomorrow. No, wait. What? Captain Otis. Captain Otis. Oh, all right. If you won't help me, I'll go there myself. Somebody's got to do something for Dan. <laughs> In a moment, we'll return for the third act of Danger, Dr. Dan Field, but first... <laughs> now back to Michael Gunn for the third act of... Danger, Dr. Dan Field. <laughs> Yeah, it's me, Red. Come up. How's the news hawk? Uh, are you kidding? He no more a news hawk than I am. His name's Danfield, some kind of a doctor. How do you know? Well, it says so on the stuff I took out of his pocket. Oh. Probably them dumb cops sent him down here to oh. snoop around. Hey, Red, he's coming out of it. Yeah. Mm, sure didn't do his face no good, beating him up like that, Red. And ain't nothing to what he's gonna oh. get. Yeah. Hunk, come on. Come on, wake up. Huh? What? Oh, that you, Rusty? What'd he say? Oh, R Rusty. Rusty. They... Who's he? Wait a minute, Red. Rusty. Yeah, I'm Rusty. What's the matter? They got me, Rusty. They... You're not Rusty. Oh, Rusty's a girl, eh, Dan Field? Dan... My name isn't Dan Field, is it? No? Listen, wise guy, we know all about you, see? We know that the cop sent you down here to snoop around. We know you're a doctor. And we know you don't work for no newspaper. Oh, you do? Yeah, we do. You told us all about it when you were asleep. Danfield, I feel sorry for a jerk like you. You'd better begin feeling sorry for yourself. Captain Otis of the police department is waiting to hear from me, and if he doesn't, it's going to be... Oh, that's it, huh? Captain Otis is waiting to hear from you. <laughs> Listen, Jughead, you ain't been in this game long enough to know any of the answers at all. Oh, no? No. And get this. Red Jacoby was captured early this afternoon in Chicago. And Captain Otis knows all about it. Now, how do you like that? They're lying. Okay. So am I. But, uh, who knows who knows that but you, huh? <laughs> so, Otis don't hear from you. So he comes looking for you. So he looks and don't find nothing. So how can he even prove you he was here? 
Why, you dumb jerk. Wait a minute, Red. Wait a minute. Yeah? What's wrong? What's the matter, Bob? I'm thinking. This rusty babe the guy just mentioned, what if she's a friend of his nibs here? So what if she is? Even a dumb guy like him might have a friend. Well, thank you. You're very flattering. Well, don't you get it, Red? That welfare babe, it was hurt with the rusty babe. What? Sure, she knew Danfield was coming here, so she comes around to see how he's doing, pretending to be a welfare babe. You dumb game. And you let her get away, huh? Well, I ought to smack you one right in the chest. Ah, oh, take it easy, Red. Wait a minute. How'd I know who she was? Oh, how'd you know who she was? Why, if you had any brains, you'd have figured it out. You uh, know what'll happen now? She'll go call this Captain Orison. Oh, listen. Somebody's at the door. It's probably the cops. It ain't the cops. It's that girl. Come on, let's see. If you aren't that girl, I'll see that... Go down the end of the hall and look out the window. Yeah. I'll just do that. Huh. Hey, Red, it's the girl, all right. I'll go down and let her in. You keep out of sight. Yeah, okay, okay. Only don't let her get away this time. Oh, don't worry about that. Well, if it ain't the welfare babe back again, didn't I tell you we don't want no welfare? I'm sorry. I lost one of my gloves, and I thought I might have dropped it here. Lost one of your gloves, huh? Well, come on in and look for it. Thank you. Okay, chicken, where's the other one? Other uh, what? Uh, the glove. You said you lost one. Where's the mate to it? Why, I, uh, uh I must have lost that one, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, chicken, you kill me. What are you locking the door for? Dead. Hey, Red. Yeah, baby. I heard her. Who are you? The name's Jacoby, baby. Red Jacoby. Red Jacoby? Then Dan is here. You guessed it, Red Top. Your boyfriend's here, and he ain't leaving in a hurry, neither. What have you done to him? Dan! Dan! Listen to her. Want to know what we've done to him? Why, baby, we did something like this. Oh, you brute. Yeah, I'm a brute. Now, come snooping around here, will you? I'll quit it, Red. You can have your fun later. Like now, we've got to start thinking. This female stooge has probably already called the police. Please, and I have called the police. They're on their way now. Oh, so the cops is on their way now, huh? Boy, you, I got a half mind to... I'll not take to... it easy, Red. We ain't got much time. Look, I got an idea. Yeah? What is it? We ain't so bad off. So long as we got these two, we can make a deal, can't we? Uh, yeah. Papa, you got brains. We're sure we can make a deal. Sure. The cops come snooping around here. We can make a deal. We'll trade in a couple of corpses for a head start out of town. Dan, we'll never get these nuts loose. Yes, we will, Rusty. We've got to. Hold the wrists up here so I can get at them. Well, even if we do get free, we'll never get out of this room. Cross that bridge when we come to it. Uh, there. I think that knot is loosening. You sure Captain Otis said that Red Jacoby was captured in Chicago? Of course I am. He wouldn't believe me when I told him you were being held prisoner here. I know Otis. He believed you, all right. What do you mean? Turn your wrists in as far as you can, will you? I mean, he probably thought someone was listening to your conversation and didn't want them to know it was suspicious. Oh, Dan, do you really think so? Yes. There. That knot's loose. Now see if you can slip your hand out of the ropes. No, oh, it's still too tight. Do you think Captain Otis will come here? I know he will. So does Red. That's why we're being held prisoners. Red probably thinks he can make a deal with Otis. Now, try it now, will you? All right, I've got one hand free. Good, now start getting me free. Got to let Otis know we're safe before he starts talking to Red. Damn, listen, that must be Captain Otis now. Yes, hurry, will you? I'm doing the best I can. Wait a minute. There, I think I can help a little. There, one's coming loose. All right, now. Now, I think I can make it. Yes, there we are. Oh, we're not much better off. This room is... There's a, there's a window over there. There we are. Oh, Dan, this is nothing but an air shaft. Yes, it goes all the way down to the basement. What are we going to do? Those, those blankets on my bed, Rusty. Maybe if we knotted them together, we can... Well, they'd never reach the ground. Yeah, maybe not. Oh, I've got another idea. Tie the blankets together, Rusty, will you, while I pull the bed over to the window? All right. The police car stopped in front of the house. Yes, if we don't get to Otis within the next few minutes, we'll never get to him. You know, I'll just knot one end of this blanket around the bedpost. Throw the other end out the window, will you, Rusty? All right. Oh, it doesn't come within 15 feet of the ground, Dan. I knew it wouldn't. So did I. Dan, what are you going to do? I'm going to try and swing over to that drain pipe. It's our only chance. Well, you, you can't do that. Yes, I can, Rusty. You'll have to do it, too. There's no time to think. You can't. But, Dan, you'll never make it. I'm sorry to disappoint you, Rusty. <sighs> now, come on, Rusty. I'll, I'll hold the blanket tight. I'm afraid, Dan. Now, there isn't time for you to be afraid. Come on. All right. Be careful. Take it easy. Don't look down, whatever you do. You're all right. There we are. 
Dan, the, the pipe's going to give way. No, it isn't. Here, now, I'll slide down. Come on, hurry up. Well, Dan, she's coming loose. You've still got a second or two, Rusty. Let yourself go. There, I'm down. Only a few more feet to go now. You all right? Dan, it's giving way. You're all right, Rusty. Here, I oh. got you. There. Hmm. Okay? I guess so. You think they heard? Yeah, I doubt it. Well, outside the basement. Look, there's the door. It'll probably be locked. It is locked. Oh, Dan, now what? Well, that isn't a very complicated affair, I don't think. I ought to be able to open that with my pet knife. Suppose Captain Lotus goes away. Oh, that's what I'm afraid of. There we are. Now, come on. Terribly dark in here. The light from that door is enough. Yeah, look, there's some stairs. No, Keep quiet. Come on. Can you hear voices? Yeah, so can I. It's probably Captain Otis talking to Red. Here's the door. Yes. Wait a minute now. I'll open it a crack. Oh, all right, Jacoby. I haven't any alternative. You release Doc Danfield and Miss Fairfax unharmed, and I'll promise you a 24 head start out of town. Copper, that's what I call being smart. Hey, Poppy? I don't trust no copper, no matter what he says. How do we know that it'll do... It seems to me, Poppy, that you have less choice than I have. Now, this house is completely surrounded, and if you'd rather not... Forget it, Copper. Poppy, you talk too much. All right. Get out now. On the contrary, Captain. I think you better come in. Danfield. Get him, Red. Oh, no, you don't. Look out, Dan. Put him away, boy. Take care of the little Captain. Okay. Hey, right. How do you like this? Fine, Red. And how do you like this? And this? Oh. In a moment, we return for the conclusion of Danger, Dr. Danfield. But first... For the conclusion of Danger, Dr. Dan. Sure, I know that the police don't make deals, Doc. I'd gotten you into that mess, and I felt that you were my personal responsibility. <laughs> and don't think we don't appreciate it, Captain. You know, I'd hate to think what would have happened to us if we hadn't come down that drain pipe. Yeah, it almost happened anyway when the drain pipe broke. <laughs> well, it's all over now. Now, wait a minute, Doc. Uh, just how were you so sure that Red was living at 28 River Street when Poppy was showing you through the house? Well, the bottle of hair dye which Poppy had carelessly left on the dresser for one thing, Captain. Well, I don't see how that would have told you anything. I know a couple of women who dye their hair, believe it or not. Oh, really, Red? <laughs> well, there was something else. I found it in the wastebasket. Yeah? What was it? An empty carton from a tube of shaving cream, Captain. Oh, the giant size tube. The carton looked fresh. Oh, nice going, Doc. Very nice. But that doesn't answer my question. Oh, what's that, Rusty? Am I uh, still fired? Fired? Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, I remember. No, 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 that was uh, what is known as an emergency measure, Rusty. Mm -hmm. As soon as we get back to the office, my dear, I'll rehire you properly. <laughs> <laughs> 